Welcome to Cow Horse, Full Contact by Ben Self, with host Chris Dawson and Russell Dilday. Cow Horse, Full Contact is a view into the industry from our eyes, seeing some of the people that we've seen and grown up with, and getting to hear some of the stories we've loved our whole cow horse lives and would like to share with you. And along the way, we might come up with a little bit of information that helps you on your journey in the cow horse. Welcome back to Cow Horse Full Contact Special Edition with Andrew Steger live. No, that's not correct. We're not live, but we are at the world's greatest horseman. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Andrew knocked it out in the limited open bridle prelims on old yeller. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, about him and about that run? Well, he's, uh, he's a horse that, uh, Scott and Darnell true blood own and been lucky enough to get a hold of him and, and ride him. And, and, uh, he's a great horse and he's a show horse, you know, like he comes in there and I mean, the tougher the cattle are, the, better he is and he's been a great horse to for me as he as somebody coming up and trying to come through the ranks like he's been a great horse for me to come up and try and uh come and mix it with you guys you know right that's awesome i love it i'm a long way away but i love it i love when they step up in town though right that's a great feeling yeah but no he's a great horse he's a cat t Masterson out of a new cash mare and uh yeah we had some had some good luck in the first round and he he did great in the second round we end up End up winning reserve world, so that was good. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Very cool. So, by your accent, I take it you're from Australia? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was a pretty good guess. That was a pretty good guess. <laughs> yeah. Hey, these, lingu- these linguistic skills right here, <laughs> hey, don't nothing get by me. I got it. So, uh, where are you from in Australia, and what brought you over here? So, grew up in a town called Dubbo, New South Wales. You know, I uh, grew up around horses. We camp draft over there a lot. I'm not sure if it's uh, it's kind of Australia's own sport. Not a lot of people know about it, but it's... Uh, right, no, it's awesome, yeah. It's I, a great sport. Yeah, and I, I you follow Jane Kennedy. Anybody that's interested in camp drafting, follow Jane Kennedy on Facebook. Because yes. she has posts all the wicked runs from camp drafting over there, and it's outstanding. Yes. No, Excellent it, watching. It's a great sport. And so I grew up camp drafting and came over here. Actually, I, I first came over came overseas rodeo road bronx and i actually went to canada for three and a half years i was up there maybe and then i uh come came down here and just kind of come down here rodeo and poked around it. right and where are yeah. you based out of right now i'm in california yep, yep. whereabouts hanford california oh right yep, yep. cow country so, yeah heart of the well, crca probably uh more orchard country but <laughs> <laughs> it's getting that way isn't yeah. it yeah and uh, so, Andrew, when you in Australia, what did your family do when you were young? So, mum and dad both uh, they both worked for the the council, we call it, but they worked for the go- their government jobs. And my mum's a she's actually a revenue accountant, and my dad I call him the dog catcher because that's kind of what he does. <laughs> but uh, uh, he uh, is that an know, is that an elected position? Oh yeah, 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 perfect. Yeah, it uh, it's from all the peers. Of the council, will like the best man with a dog, and he goes and gets it. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So how <laughs> how big is was your town? Uh, so Dubbo is a pretty big town. I mean, it is a town of about oh probably fifty thousand. It's a it's a it's oh. a big town at home, you know. And and we're we're probably on a map. We're about six hours, five and a half, six hours west of Sydney. So we're pretty central in in New South Wales and. But no, they uh, they had government jobs, and we always had horses growing up, and we had a little place, just a <laughs> little sixty acre place, and we just had our horses and went and camp drafted and poked around on the weekends. Did a lot of pony club, and uh, actually did a lot of three day eventing growing up. I did a lot of dressage and show jumping and stuff oh, like that's that. That's cool. Yeah, we had we had uh, dad made me do all that stuff, and had to wear them little well, sure. Jod, jodpers. Hey, I'll, I'll, whatever, call them, I'll call them jodpers. Whatever you got to wear, I mean, if that's the coolest event. I mean, uh, don't threaten me with a good time. Yeah. I wouldn't have no problem <laughs> with it. Sarah, th- Sarah events, and so I've gone and walked some courses with her. Yeah. That looks like a kick in the pants right oh, it there. Was, it was a great, great upbringing, you know, for teaching balance and timing and everything, you know, with a horse. And if you want to ride, like, 
Sarah Dawson or Andrew yeah. Steger. Uh, try a little eventing. I would I would much rather like try to ride like Sarah Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing a hell of a lot better than Andrew Steger. At the uh, well, <laughs> she's not a very good picker, though. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got their weak things. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about being self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> so what in the Pony Club, everybody from Australia talks about the Pony Club. What goes on in the Pony Club? So Pony Club's, uh, it's a little, like you go there and you learn how to ride and you learn different, different stuff. It's a little more English. And West than Western, you know, like we uh, we have the flat saddle, like English English st- style saddles, and you'll learn you'll do like boy rider classes or girl rider classes if you're a girl, and and then you'll do dressage and show jumping and cross country and three day eventing and stuff, and uh, we had like bends and flags and barrels and all kinds of stuff like that too, you know. So there's lots of sporting events as well, like fast, you know, like we had the kind of like your guys' uh, American style bending except we pole didn't bending pole bending yep. yeah but you didn't run up the one side and, and down the other you just kind of weaved them and weaved back both timed events and judged events in the pony club yes how far did you go was it just uh, you just uh, there's a small group and you have the events close to home or you'd go twice a year to like the pony club and it'd be like a two-week deal you'd go during the school holidays oh. they'd have it and you'd do a week of of like uh, training, so to speak, and you'd have you'd be set up into divisions of your riding capability. So if you're a, if you're a, a good advanced. good rider, or advanced kid, you'd be with some other advanced kids, and you guys that we'd be doing some, you know, more higher level stuff. And then you know you, your newbies, or I guess you say your beginners, they'd be just doing new basics, and they'd work on their your basic riding skills and stuff like that. And then they'd all have They'd have a uh, you know a competition at the end of the week. Your highest point score is like you'd win a five points for first, say, and then you'd have a point tally at the end of the day. And then your top point scorers would go to what we call jamboree. And jamboree was a deal where you'd go, you can compete against other pony clubs. And then you'd take away, you'd go as a team, and then you'd go and compete. And and it was you'd win the jamboree or your team would win the jamboree so it was good we had a great pony club with the gravesend pony club it was a great pub, a great club so did you practice together a lot be other than the two-week session like monthly not really no 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 not at all you'd just go there and then you'd meet a lot of people there that you haven't met before like it, the club that i used to go to gravesend it was a it was a little club and by the end of it uh, because we had, uh, they had very good instructors, and so it got to be bigger and bigger and bigger. And and by the time I left, it was it was a pretty big, strong club. Like it, they won, <coughs> they won a lot of jamborees. So as a team, mm, well, yeah. that pro- it sounds like it started a lot of people. It's almost like a um, more li- more like a clinic than a show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh. you'd go and you'd have a. It, w- it was like an everyday deal and you'd have a different instructor every day for a different event and then they would bring in certain people for that were very competitive on a professional level uh, to, you know, do a special day and, you know, twice, you know, you'd get two or three people during that week that would come in and do a s- certain event that had gone to the Olympics or had gone somewhere. So it was a, it was a great learning foundation. That's a good uh, program. So did you do, uh, when did you start with the rough stock or the saddle bronc or any of that as uh, far as your age? I got on my first steer. I got on a junior steer at the Gravesend Rodeo. And it's <laughs> my uncle actually hauled the steers in to the to the rodeo. And he was giving me, he, he wasn't, he's a, well, he's, he's a farmer at, we call, at home and so they have a bunch of land there, and he hauled, he donated the steers, and they were big, fat steers. And he's like, "You better hope you don't get that yellow, <laughs> that yellow bally one in there. He's got little knobby horns on him, and I tell you what, he will, he ain't bluffing." And I was like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, it's all good, Rob. You know." Anyways, so next day I go to the rodeo, and I get on. I didn't get him. I got something else, and I got, I got bucked off. And I get up, and they just left all the steers. In the arena. Oh, after you rode after them. After you rode them. Oh, lucky. Yeah. So uh, you just, if, if 
probably better off I did get bucked off because then you wouldn't end up in the middle of them. But right. <laughs> <laughs> not not the case. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up and, and I'm like, oh, you know, good deal. Go and uh, I, I go to go get my rope and I hear this, look out! <laughs> and <laughs> I turn around and this yellow bally steer <laughs> is got me in Very his down. sights. <laughs> and, and I... Stepped around him like a champ, just boom, stepped around him. I didn't think he was going to come back. <laughs> so I stepped around him, I looked back at the, the, the clown, and he's like, just pointed at him, like, didn't say anything. He couldn't say anything. It was too, too, <laughs> too, late. too late. And then just mowed me down. <laughs> I, turned, I went to turn around, and my tripped over my spurs, and he just mowed me down. And, I mean, gave me a back rubbing in the dirt. <laughs> And my uncle was, and he was there watching it all. And he's like, I told you to watch out for that one. <laughs> Next <laughs> time you'll listen. I didn't even draw that one. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first rodeo experience. Naturally, I had to go again. Yep. Yeah, you know, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Got Just, bucked off and run over. Yeah. And so thought, oh, this is the event for me. Can only go up from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Improvement should be easy. Yes. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I was probably, I think I might have been 15 or 16 then. No, sorry, I would have only been about 14. So I, I rode some junior steers for the next couple of years, and then I left school when I was about oh, 15. I went and worked up in some stations and, and did some contract mustering for some people up around in the Northern Territory and up in the Gulf and far north Queensland and in the Gulf of Carpentaria and stuff up there. And the, one of the guys I worked for, Ben Hall was his name, and he, he'd he actually, uh, I mean, he's a very accomplished camp drafter, saddle bronc rider, great horseman, and both actually that whole family, you know, like uh, the Hall family taught a lot growing up and just with horsemanship and, and being competitive and how to go and compete and stuff like that. And, uh, but so he, uh, I was working for him, and I was I was probably sixteen at the time, and he just ended me up in a in a rodeo in the bronc ride, and I was like, all right, you know, all right, let's go. So we went to town. I didn't have a saddle. I didn't have nothing. <laughs> so I get there and I borrow a saddle off a guy, and I sit in it, and I didn't. I was like, oh, I can feel my feel the stirrups. Let's get on it. You know, this is about ten minutes before they run them in, and so I get on and. At, uh, it was at Saxby Roundup. What they have have a deal there at Saxby. They have it's called like the best lone buck jumper, and they have uh, a bunch of these stations. Or they breed these these broncs, and they'll bring them in, and they'll buck them, and then you know if they win the feature horse or whatever. Oh right, yeah. They'll uh, they get paid for it. So and it's but so it's a competition for the for the g- cowboys the as well as the stock, you yeah. know, and and then uh, they have pickup teams and everything. You know, it's a great it's a great deal to get everybody involved, and it's a it's one of the bigger rodeos up there in the north, and and so I get on in the novice and novice bronc riding, and first time I have people help me saddle this thing and get on it, and I mean, I still don't know what happened. <laughs> I mean, I I didn't get knocked out or anything, but there was a horse under me, and they opened the gate, and he wasn't there anymore, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, all right, well. And everybody was laughing, and and it was kind of funny. But they end up featuring that horse at the rodeo that year. Lucky draw. Yeah, and a uh, uh, Daryl Kong drew it in the feature, and it, he he and actually it bucked him off. So I was like, well, Daryl and Daryl rode Bronx very well. Like he was a good Bronx rider, so I didn't feel so bad about that. I was like, oh, maybe I got a shot at this. So, so <laughs> I ended up again. So I went to Sedan Dip. This is this terrible. Terrible first experiences for rodeo. Yeah, yeah. It was brilliant. Yeah, that you stayed in there. <laughs> a stubborn, quick I, learner. Stubborn, I guess. Yes. So I went to uh, went to Sedan Dip and I used Ben. I, ben gave me his stuff and he's like, "Now make sure you use my stuff." Like, yep. Right. So I did, and uh, he was judging anyway. So I get on and go out there and I started trying make making an all right ride and then it just all went to hell and I get up and I'm still holding my bronc ride. And Ben's walking over to me. He's like, I told you to use my stuff, you know. And he's kind of chewing me out. And I was like, I did. And it broke. <laughs> so, yeah. so then he just turned around and walked away. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, no, that was kind of where I guess I was hooked after that. 
Well, but I, I want to touch why. on one thing, though, because I was over there for a little while and went to the rodeo, and you said the pickup teams, yeah. meaning it's an event. Yes. And the one I went to, it was an event. And the worst thing was to have some of them come and help you get off of your bronc. I never had that problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> luckily. Yeah. Well, the one I was at, the one team, there was a, a guy that was fairly handy, and there was a guy in shorts, a tank top, tennis shoes, no hat on a nappy. <laughs> <laughs> that was, and he was intoxicated. And no. Yeah, just slightly. So the, I'm watching thinking, what in God's name is going on here? Well, the saddle bronc riders, if they could ride one, would wait till he went by because the guys that got bucked off and he was coming to help, he just ran them over. <laughs> and which serves him right to lose the competition, but the guy on the saddle bronc is the one paying all the price. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> guy just can't even <laughs> it, they're the It is some good watching. Like if Incredible. If anybody's wanting to go to Australia, go to, go Sa- to a rodeo. Go to Saxby Roundup. It's Great. Well, it's kind of universal because that wasn't Saxby. It was uh, Norman. Norman. No, I one. don't remember where it's it was. all up in that country. Kananura. That's what Kanana. it was. <laughs> yeah, it was Kananura. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It was <laughs> amazing event. Made you want to stay on. <laughs> <laughs> you got sticky real quick. Yes. <laughs> oh my lord. So you're about 16. Do you once you start the Saddle Bronx? Do you? Stay with rodeo, or you still go back and forth with the English and the camp drafting, or what? Do you get a job? You quit school now? So I guess I, you're at the station, huh? Yeah. So I well, I'd, so I'd worked for for Ben, and he had, uh, you know, we were traveling around and contract mustering, and so we'd go from place to place, and we'd go in there and get their cattle, and and we'd go through them, and we'd preg test them all, and then get rid of them, and uh, sorry. Um, you know, cull all the ones that weren't pregnant. And oh, right. And then brand the calves and kind of do all that work for them. That's kind of what our job was. Oh, so you were getting paid to work them. You weren't getting, you weren't catching them and selling them. No, no, we were getting paid to go and catch them and clean them up. There was a couple of places there where we, we went to that they hadn't been touched for ever, ever you know, eight, ten years, you know. And, and you tell people that and they're like, ha. Ah. They don't understand. They, but it's like. You know, that country's so big and vast, like, and, you know, there's, it just, uh, it was a real eye-opener, you know, like, see, like, real wild cattle and going and handling them, and so we did that, and so I, at that stage, I'd kind of left the pony club stuff, and we were just kind of camp drafting, and started, started rodeo on, and, and then I, I kind of, I worked for Ben for a while, and then I, I came back down to, Dubbo, after that season had been done, and because it gets wet up there and you don't do anything in the winter time, uh, sorry, in the summertime, it gets too, because it's tropical. Right, too wet. Yeah, so you got to wet in your dry season. So, j- <coughs> well, our winter time, you know, is June, July, August. Your guys is summer, so it's kind of opposite. But so I guess uh, so we came. I come back home, and actually, I got a job working uh, as a stock and station agent. So I did it. Did my trade there. And and uh, what's a station agent? So stock station agents, uh, we would go out to your place and we would look at your cattle and draft them up and you'd send them to us to go to the sale, like go to the auction. So you're actually working for the auction? Yes. Well, it was a, it's a little different to how some of your guys' auction mu- works over here, but it's the same same concept. Same yeah. principle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we was doing that and so I did that for a while and that's where I kind of really started rodeoing and we were st- I was still camp drafting and doing rodeo on and poking around there and, and then uh, stayed there until I was, I think I was 20 when I left and I came came overseas, went to Canada when I was 20, went over there for six months and came over there rodeo on and got to meet some guys up there and then went home again and went back and went back to just riding horses and contract mustering and stuff for an no, are you, so are you riding very many – are you getting paid to ride horses then or are you kind of owning them and selling them or what kind of – is, is, tr- is it much of a training deal when you're over there or not so much? Not so much. Like at that stage I was 
I was breaking in a lot of horses. Uh, not a lot. I was breaking in some horses. Um, for pay? Just for, yeah. I mean, by the month? Yes. Yep. yep, by the month. Yep. And I'd had, you know, at that at that point, uh, you know, maybe do two or three because I had a full-time job that we'd work. And, I mean, we would, there was weeks there where I don't think I, uh, I'd have to, I'd have to look at it, but. I mean, I bet we worked 120 hours a week some weeks. Yeah. You know, it was, Hold on. we were flat out. Yeah. And because uh, the, the guys that I worked for, uh, Carter Ramsey and Weber was the company name. And them guys were, you know, they were, they were a great company. Still are very strong. One of the higher numbers, you know, they'd have the highest numbers coming through the sale. And we were working at a, a Dubbo, which is probably one of the, uh, it'd be up there in the top three highest biggest sale yards in australia you know so they have a lot of numbers coming in and out of there you know so i want to get back to real quick about the wild cattle and catching them you know i cowboyed here forever before i went there and been around a lot of wild cattle crossbreds and stuff and i go there and go in a place same thing it's a million and a quarter acres we got to build our roads to get in there so we are going in there to catch cattle that have never seen humans so when we move in there to new country, we have a dozer and a road grader, and we build out into that area and go into a flat. And I always thought everything would be just running. So we pull out there in the middle of this flat, and we can see a few cows off in the trees a little bit. We just pull out there and park, and they come 100, 150. No steers, just bulls and cows, no brands, nothing, and just come and lick the pickup. <laughs> <laughs> They've never seen a human. So it's so, di- they don't become wild until after you start chasing them. And after you grab them by the tail and try, you, and pull, them and try to pull them down. <laughs> it stinks when that doesn't work, huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's I, terrible. Did, Do not let go of that tail. Oh, yeah. Well, did, did you probably did some, had the bull catches and yeah, stuff. Yeah, we had the bull catches. Oh, man. Did you do much of that? Yeah. Yeah, we had, uh, there was one day. We got done because we had we were walking a bunch of we had like coaches. We'd go the helicopter would go bring in a mob of you know quieter cows that that's the coaches. Calves, so yeah. we, you would call them your coaches, and you'd go grab a mob of them, and we'd be all on horseback. You'd walk them around through all the clearings and to where to the yards, wherever you're going to go stay that night, and then the helicopter and the bikes and the bull catchers would just bring your cattle as you go and. By the time you get to the yard, you might you might end up with twenty five hundred head or something like that. Right? Insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, along the way, you've tied up yeah fifteen or twenty wild bulls or heifers or big whatever. bullocks or whatever. Yeah. You know, whatever leaves nothing, nothing got away. You know, them guys that I worked for, like if if something left and you were it, it went on your side, you damn sure better catch it. Motivation, yeah. some <laughs> yeah. motivational speaking. Motivational speaking, yes. Yeah, yeah and it people maybe don't understand. So were they Devon Shorthorn Cross where you were? There was a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. There was always, there was a lot of Brahmin cattle where we oh, were. Oh, big, really? big Brahmin cattle. And every now and then you'd get a little Hereford Bowley cow about this big. Mm. And she'd have three calves on her, a big wiener. Yeah, right. A little <laughs> tight, another, another... <laughs> three or four hundred pounder and then a little baby one and yeah. i mean she'd be skin and bones and they'd be all sucking on her yeah oh yes best cow in the mob <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and what about the bull catching like in the toyotas because i was a strapper i wasn't good enough to drive you know i just fell into it and but full on adrenaline for, I mean, when oh. The, oh my god it i is, loved it. it it's just insane there should be a uh, there should be a deal where you can buy a vacation and go on a bull catching. Yes. Like you go to Six Flags, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to go bull catching. And That's so, and I, the guy that was catching on our place, the contract catcher that I went to hang out with was Milton Jones. Yeah. He was about 25 years old. Did you heard of him? He did the book and the I, I, I live. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, a man. I mean, he's a man. <laughs> he, was all, he wasn't very tall, but it was just all meat from shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and could move. Uh, and I would go strap for him some, and we're knocking him down, knocking him down, and I'm loving the tripping him. I'm wanting to trip him. Yeah. You know, so he shows me on one, and he goes, uh, a full-grown bull gets out, and it won't hook him, which almost never happens with the Devons. 
And so he just gets a hold of its flanks and just, like, makes it sit down and gets it down. I don't even know how it happened. Is it's that like, legal? well, that wasn't that good of a... I'm not sure that that's legal. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. and that place, that, that all things... All yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, well, that wasn't really a good example, but you kind of get the idea. I'm thinking, well, I'm not sure I have the idea. I have no but idea at all. You're up. <laughs> <laughs> so we go on a little Mickey... The shooter's there, and we're going, and it's we're hooking it. We've got him up against the bumper, and we're doing – the speedometer's knocking up there pretty high. And they're like, go, because the, the tail is right there by your door. There's no doors on the Toyotas. So I grab the tail, and I'm thinking, we need to slow down a little bit. And they're, no, go. You got it. You got it, mate. You got it. And then <laughs> Bluey just shoves me out. Well, my feet can't go that fast. <laughs> <laughs> those get behind me <laughs> and i'm no i know you wrap that one you wrap that hair around your left hand and you get a hold up high by the top of the tail with the other hand and just dra- i just drag until he finally slows down and goes to hook me and then that's when you tip him over but, i mean it worked out but when i stepped out there and my feet left my shoulders <laughs> i thought oh this is not how it looked. <laughs> <laughs> ouch. Yeah, ouch. But, oh, man, it was so fun. Yeah, So no, fun. They, uh, uh, some of them, and there's some guys up there that, I mean, unbelievable with, with a wild cow, wild bull. Unbelievable. I mean, it wasn't me. It's like they are incredible to watch, you know. It's just yeah. staggering. Yeah. And w- so we would knock those things down with the, you know how it went with the helicopter bringing them in. Yeah. And you're sitting on that flat, hiding in that, um, you're hiding in the brush in that Toyota with the driver, and you hear them choppers coming, and it's just like a Vietnam movie. Just <laughs> 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 and you're just sitting there, and when that first bull's foot hits that opening, it is all Game out. It's, yeah. You can't believe how they can drive. I mean, they're, they were unbelievable. We tied down and 42 bulls in one day. There's no ant nest or tree big enough to stop it no <laughs> no <laughs> them toyotas are tough oh I'll tell you what incredible yeah well, how about the first time you go and that thing goes to hook in your door there's no door right <laughs> just a piece of armor along the side under they're just toyota jeeps and the door's gone so the armor goes right under your leg where you sit and they put it on he puts it on my side and that thing goes to hook in that toyota like it's tipping over, and I climb over the driver. He's like, oh, mate, get back down there. They never come in here. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. They had, oh, you probably didn't have, like, so now they got these hydraulic arms. I and, heard about them. And you, I never saw You it. run up there along the side of them now, and you've got a control right there on your by your wheel, steering wheel, and you can just pick that arm up, and, and it goes right around behind the behind the horns, you know, over the neck. And we so we had one bull there one day. We did that. Go up there and we pin him up there and get that arm around him. And that bull was so big and strong. He put his head down, put his head down and threw himself up. And he picked the whole front of that Toyota up <laughs> and moved it. <laughs> oh! And you're tied to him. Yeah, we're like, oh. So we uh, we found so them controls work to turn him loose too. Yeah, but he kind. he we didn't let him go. Yeah, you got to keep him <laughs> yeah, caught. We just kept, right. kept his feet moving, you know. <laughs> That took him to a bigger tree to tie him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we tied one to a tree, and he pulled it out. And he's running off with the tree. <laughs> and so now we go back to knock him down again, because you got to knock him down st- and strap front and backs after you tie him tree to get him loaded. Well, <laughs> we're trying to get him with the Toyota, and the tree's getting under. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> Did you get to drive? Any Andrew? No, they. I was a grunt because yeah. I was like sixteen. So we it takes a bit. So yeah, it takes. So, we, it. so we'd, but it was that was like the funnest, the funnest job I ever had. It was yeah. awesome. We'd Me go, because we'd, we'd go and we'd go fishing of a night. We'd we'd put a, a, a fishing net out during the day. It's very legal. <laughs> Edit. What? <laughs> what? Hey, what? What mud grab? What mud grab? Mud grab. Yeah. Mud grab. <laughs> and uh, so we'd have a net, but then. And we, every time we'd pull that thing, there'd be a croc in it. <laughs> like, and it'd be dark, and I'd, we'd be in a little tiny tinny 
they'd send me out because I was the youngest. And so I'd be in, out there and I'd be reeling in. And we'd catch some big barra, like big barra money. And that's good eat. Good fish. Oh, that's man. Unreal. Fresh barra money. That's what them Can't crocs think too, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you'd always get a croc or something. And, and what you do with the croc? Well, the, we usually throw them away. But there was one we decided we'd try and keep. And that did work out real good. <laughs> <laughs> He ended up biting a couple of fellas. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, I got we got one one night, and because uh, we'd have swags, you know, like bed rolls, and we'd just sleep in them all the time, out, roll them out there on the ground, and and uh, there was one fella that he was a bit of an idiot, so uh, <laughs> we uh, we duct taped this. Where is this croc? He's probably <laughs> probably he's probably three foot, you know, just a little fresh, just a little, little, little freshy, and yeah. uh, so we duct taped his mouth shut. And uh, we took him back to camp and we threw this crock up in the bottom of his old mate's swag. And I tell you what, you ain't never seen a naked man <laughs> <laughs> get out of bed and run across the flat so fast <laughs> <laughs> in pitch dark. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, it was, it was, there was always stuff going on like that. that was, there was some fun out there. Oh, was, yeah. There was... You had that thick skin because it was coming back at you mm. one day, you know. Mm. What a fun place. I almost didn't come back. I bet. Uh, yeah, Just you would have f- you'd fit right in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did love it. I loved it. No, it so was, many cows. And it's different, you know, like, because we don't rope, you know, don't rope nothing. Like, your guys is cowboying is complete opposite to our kind, our kind of cowboying. It's it's kind of a, it's it's a different, different deal. Much bigger. You know, that place I was on is a million quarter acres, and it was not. Just a it place. It was a smaller Just place. Just a place, yeah. There were several next to us that were three million. That's I insane. Mean, I can't, I can't, fa- I don't fathom, right? And I mean. get lost because it's very flat country. So I come from the California mountains. If you hit a river, you know where it's running to and from. There, it might run south, and then it might run west, and go back north, and back. I mean, it meant nothing. <laughs> the rivers meant nothing there. Just uh, You're lucky if you found water. Yeah, you're lucky <laughs> if you found water. And then you needed to boil it, because you drink through your teeth to keep the dirt out. And the horses <laughs> were on our place were so rotten that you would just ride in there and get some in your hat and get a drink. Because the whole, the whole getting on and off thing was an issue like you, you i mean you had to, we I, had, I peed off the saddle a few times because like, it was like super a good puncher. super super puncher yeah, yeah super puncher. i just like i'm don't not never I, get off i don't want to get off this is too do much. that top button up and you be yeah <laughs> <laughs> seemed like you were wearing less clothes there though we had uh, that one place we went to i don't i can't remember why but whatever reason we didn't we didn't have our horses or because we always took our own horses. So for like the first two weeks, we had to ride the station horses. And so, oh. for and none of these horses have been rode. And I don't think some of them have, were ever rode. So we had a day. We had one day and we went run, you know, 40 horses into the, into the yards. And we will just pick through them. You know, like, all right, I want that one, that one. That one moves good, you know. He looks like he can run. So we did that and then we'd all get, pick... Pick three or four each to get through the next couple of weeks. So then we'd start riding them, and everything would everything bucked. Absolutely, everything, everything bucked. <laughs> and then, but you'd be riding along, and we'd be walking while the cattle, and then somebody would just out of the blue just be gone <laughs> ninety miles through the mob, bucking or running off or doing something. Like it was just, it was just a gong show for like two weeks. I don't know how we did got anything Anyone done. Anyone lived. Yes. Oh, one guy actually, he had to go home. He broke. <laughs> he got broken. <laughs> damage. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah. yeah. He uh, he got damaged pretty good. But no, it was all, there was, there was one day there that actually the boss, man, he had, uh, he had one and he was being, he was being smart about it because he's like, I, I picked the best one, you know. He's yeah. all that, you know, for, for about a week he's been riding this thing and he, he did pick the best one. And then all of a sudden we're, we're just 
down there one day and this thing just a dog runs up behind him and just kind of didn't even just spooked him just kind of in the back of his legs and this thing took off bucking and so ben just steered him right towards the dam and he bucked right into the dam <laughs> into the dam went went under and then came up and bucked right out of it and then kept going and I <laughs> It took he took a while to pull up. Like that that horse was spooked. Some Wow. Yeah, I have not seen one buck underwater back out. That no, would be no bad. yeah, that like, usually'll chill him if you I mean, some water will usually kinda break the yeah. flow of that. But, yeah, uh, no, there was always always something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Those strings they just handed him out, you know. And that Quintana, they're handing the string out and I was working for Quintana John Quintana. And he says, he puts this one of my strings like, hey, this is a good horse. He'll hump a little bit, but he never go in a bad spot, never buck in a bad spot, never get you hurt. I step on him. He bucks directly through the string of horses, almost clothesline me, straight up a hill of rocks, till the rocks get so big he can't go n- no more, turns around, bucks back through the string of horses, gets me on the flat, and I'm thinking, now we're in the flat. I got you now. Uh, so I feed him a little iron to teach him a lesson. And I was uh, like, hey, mister, I am so sorry. He had a <laughs> whole nother level of bucking. So I'm back into survival mode. <laughs> he, goes, he bucks until he runs off and he hits a ditch and flips over and knocks me kind of like I'm, al- I'm awake. Maybe but knock I some sense into you. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can see and I can think, but I can't move anything. And he is horrible, this horse. And as he flips over and starts to get up, I see my foot hook in my rope. Ooh. And I'm watching my leg go up, and I'm thinking, this is going to be the end. This is what you were talking about the other day with Matt, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it fell out right the last night oh. I lived. Because <laughs> it was all, it was in the river bottoms. They would never caught me. No, uh, actually, nobody was even <laughs> on their horse. And we were just switching, you know. No one was even ready. It would have been, that would have been it. You would have never got found. Last no, chapter, no. there would have been no cow horse full contact. <laughs> Tana would have had a better life, married someone. Probably rich. better picker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've gone to Canada, come back. You're still yeah. taking a few outside horses. And when do you head back again? So I, I came back the next year. Uh, must have been 2009. So I came back. So I came over, first time I came over was 2008. Went home and got, rode, broke into some horses and and still draft and riding a lot of my own. Um, my dad, mum and dad, they bred some pretty nice horses, you know. And But uh, so, yeah, we'd, just, we'd, been, we'd been riding and day working and, and just messing around and come back in 2009 and then end up staying in 2009, I stayed for, I had a two-year visa, and I stayed for the duration of that. So and just Still just rodeo ro- and Just now. rodeo. Rodeo. Yeah. But now, no, in Canada or in the U.S.? In Canada. Oh, yeah. in so Canada. Was, okay. I lived in, I lived in Wainwright, Alberta. Yep. So. For two years. For two years. Wow. And it is a cold place in the wintertime. <laughs> <laughs> a little different. I had, a, I had, and I, you know what, the, I had some great people up there. It's a dry cold now. Yeah, it's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> I had a job working in it. I got a job. The first winter I had there, I had a job riding pens in a feedlot all winter. And I'm that sounds. Horrible. I had oh, the horrible is just an understatement. <laughs> like <laughs> it was minus forty. The wind was blowing. Isn't that when oh. Celsius and Fahrenheit come back together? And that minus it's, forty, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah, it's no. it's I the same it kind together. of cold. Should come together about, I don't know, zero. 15. <laughs> yeah. I think zero is cold. <laughs> right. like, when it freezes, it's cold. Cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have a I have a first winter in Canada, and I've never even seen snow. Never seen snow before in my life. And I'm 21 or 20, 20 years old or something. How cold can it be? You know, like. What's well, a big deal? My, yeah. Know, it's not that bad. It, I mean, it froze at the house one day. It was minus two, and we had to. Had frozen water buckets, you know, or minus three or something. So that can't be that bad. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah. So one of the fellows I was staying with up there, 
Chunky, Dale Woodward. He took me, and he's like, he's like, Andrew, you got to get some, you got to get some clothes. So he took me shopping, and we went and got some long johns and all that good stuff. And I mean, thank God, because I, I need, I, wore, I did not take them things off until like the S- next spring. <laughs> <laughs> they, they damn near stood up by themselves. Like, uh. but no. So I rode, rode in that feedlot and had had a couple of horses that I was riding and just. I was getting paid for, and and then was working at the feedlot, and so it was it was kind of a good deal. And just wintered up there that winter, and didn't really go rodeo too much. Just kind of worked and start learning to rope then, or not in the feedlot. Yeah, that was the f- that was probably the first time I started trying to throw a rope. I still catch myself a little bit to, <laughs> to this day, but uh, I'm getting better. <laughs> <laughs> so then you go home from there? So I stayed there and rodeoed that 2000, well, 2010, 2011, get another visa. I didn't go home again until 2012. So I stayed stayed away from home for three years, went home or for a few months, went home again, and then I came back to Canada, and then I started coming down to the U.S. And rodeoing. And rodeoing, and ended up jumping in with some guys down there and went to California and met up with some good good fellows there and rodeoed out of there. So and then I just kind of ended up staying there. Is that how you ran into Joe Willoughby? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ran into Joe there. At the Saddle Bronx, at the rodeos? At, uh, well, I'd never, he, he'd been done rodeoing, but we went up there one day to get on some practice horses. Oh, at his? At his place. Yeah. That was the first time I met Joe and um, she, we've been, Good mates ever since, you know. So yep. yeah, he good for him. Yeah, and he helped you get, huh? You, he's he told me a lot about you before I even met you, and it was kind Dang of fun. Yeah. <laughs> now so that, those uh, might be the stories we need to hear. Andrew. Oh yeah, you might have to get Joe on here. He might. Oh uh, man, me and Joe, he'd have some good ones. We for saw you. some loose teeth and some <laughs> 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 some of the things. So what made you make the transition from? Rodeo and professionally to want to train horses was that pretty direct uh, direct deal. So I I'd, I'd been rodeoing and we were doing pretty good and I had to, I had my knees operated on and uh, so then that was fine you know got it healed up came back doing all right and then I uh, just kind of had a bad bad deal and end up tearing all my shoulder to pieces and collarbone was in like six pieces and tore my. So we were needing to find Joints. a new way to make a living. Yeah, it was necessity. It, yeah, it was. It was. Oh, this this isn't going to be good. So I and I just said, well, I'll take you know twelve months and heal up and see what's going on. Just get get healthy again. And and that at that point, I'd actually just not long moved to Russell's old place in Porterville. Oh yeah. So it turned out that it was kind of a bit of a blessing in more than one ways. You know. Like, so Russell showed up there one day and right after we'd moved in and, and stayed for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> Uninvited so, probably. Yeah. yeah. So then we and then he got to riding and, and he kinda you know, he kinda steered me down this road a little bit and at at that time I was because I'd I'd been hurt, so I'd gone back to just kinda breaking in. I didn't know anything about I didn't know anything about a cow horse. Like I'd seen it a little bit here and there and I was familiar with cutting. But not so much like the rain cow side sure. of it, you know. And so you know that was kind of a door opener right there. And I remember he uh, he let me ride a mare of his he had there, and I just remember I was like, thing feels pretty good, you know. She actually stops, turns around, <laughs> you know. None of mine did any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep so, all four feet on the ground. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so but no, that was kind of like where it started for me, and that was probably. But back to, like, we've Three talked in the so. past, people working hard. I That place of mine was empty. For, I can't remember why. I can't remember why it was empty. And I talked to Joe Willoughby. Because you'd already moved back to Oklahoma. Yeah, right I was gone. And somebody else had been leasing it. Maybe Christina Allen had been there, and she had had to, she had moved. or I, I don't really remember, but it's empty. I say, Joe, you know, I'm, I got that place out there. I'm back here. He says, hey, I know a guy that works. Him and his... Um, girlfriend which uh andrew and kelsey were together at the time and i think you were leasing somewhere else we were in a place in chowchilla 
In Chow Chile, yeah. And uh, we had a place there. and Well, Holy Kelsey had a place man. there. And then uh, so when I, I kind of got hurt and then I started riding as well. So then we got to where we, we needed a bigger place. And, and then uh, that lease ran up anyway. So uh, Yeah, that's and then, what it was. So gave me Russell's number, rang Russell. We went down there and looked at it. It was a mess. <laughs> there was trees down and all kinds of stuff. Like it, I mean, it had be, been. It had been empty for a while yeah, by a look while. of it. But we didn't have. I was like, well, we can't. We didn't have nowhere else to go. You know, like that. But it was a great place. Best. It was one of the best places I think I've been. That's but awesome. just working, the two of them working hard, and was what let Joe said, hey, uh, they're good. Right. But I mean, because it's tough to put somebody in your place when you're that far away. Yeah. Don't if right. they rat it out, man, you can do nothing but lose money. Yeah. But they came in there and went to work, and uh, and we've had fun. Kelsey runs barrels a ton, yeah. so I go out there and we'd, I mean, they would have them lined up and we would go through and we'd <laughs> run barrels and we'd run down the fence for days. <laughs> oh, it was fun. Yeah, it, it was, was fun. fun. Turn a couple over here and there and <laughs> yeah, get them shoulders standing up, that won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> there, was yeah. a, that, there was a couple of times where we got a little dusty. <laughs> <laughs> And he's doing was doing pretty good with his training, and and rodeoing some too. And then the six piece collarbone, that's what flipped. I've been hammering on him a little bit too, and Joe had too because Joe was training and he got hurt bad. You know the time off, it, he didn't have the horses, he didn't have the income, right? And so it was hard. So he'd been hammering on him, and then I was hammering on him, and he finally gave it up. Now and when, then that when on. you were doing the Mustang deal, no, no. So I I only just did that, well that was just last year. Oh right. Yeah. So 2019. I got you. Yeah. Just a one time deal. Just one time. I never rode a Mustang or never, I'd never even messed with Brumbies at home or anything. But that's one thing I would love to go do is run some Brumbies at home. A couple of mates at home that I need to hit up for that. That'd right. be fun. Yeah. Ain't uh, nothing like getting out of a Toyota behind a bull though. <laughs> I'm I don't know. I'm tr- I'm willing <laughs> to find out. <laughs> But no, so that that Mustang, you know, that was the deal through Protect the Harvest for the during the Reno snap oh, a sure. bit, you know. Okay. So yep, yep. They do that deal and they you go and you, you buy one and then you bring it back to that to Reno and, and show it twelve months later and actually the first year they had it, I'd had a guy and Joe gave this fellow my number and he's like, Hey, you know, because he'd rang Joe and Joe's like, I don't really I don't really have time or don't really want to mess with that, you know. So he gave him my number, and so he was going to go buy one, and, and he didn't. They, they went for a lot of money. Like, I mean, I think that first, they a lot. first year they, yeah. they averaged more than the yearlings <laughs> in the same yeah. you know. Like, it was, oh, we didn't get one. He didn't get one then, you know. And so the next year, I went back, and I showed the next year for the first time in Reno. I showed, took a, took a bridle horse up there and showed her, and I was just watching that Mustang deal, and La- I think Lance – Johnson win it. And, um, he won that first year, and it was it was good watching, you know. And I was like, well, maybe I'll have a have a go at that deal. You know, it might be a good way to kind of get into the industry, get a make me kind of work and finish one out, you know. And so I so I did that, and I we I bought one, and there was a little bit more to it than that. I he had he had made a little money, had in his pocket, trying to buy a yearling, doesn't get nothing bought, hanging out at the bar during the. Mustang sale. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. calls home so to tell Kelsey that all the money that he had taken up there to buy this high-end yearling. We bought a Mustang. We what? bought a Mustang. We're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> but who got to say I told you so? Oh, yeah. I had to work for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, so yeah, I, I bought one and. I I rang I rang Kels. She's I was like, hey, I bought a horse, you know. She's like, oh, what'd you get? Was it metallic cat? Was it you know, <laughs> was it a one time Pepto? What, you know, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's a it's actually a paint. Oh, and she's like, oh, really? Like color me smart or something? What you know? And I was like, no, it's a uh, it's a Mustang. I bet you said it softer than that. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it was more like yeah, it's actually a Mustang. <laughs> I won't tell you what she said because it's probably not <laughs> acceptable. No, but she was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> she gave it to me pretty good, laid it on me. 
Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> But it all it all worked out in the end. Yeah, so. perfect. Yeah, yeah. about thirty thirty two thousand dollars worth of worked out. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it it made uh, so it was a it was a good twelve months, you know, and made the trip this year to Texas a lot more comfortable. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he did a good job. That horse. I don't know if you've watched it show, but it did everything. I mean everything, and looked gentle and kind doing it. It was very impressive. I I got pretty lucky. I think. Yeah, she was a she and was a good minded. She was pretty. She was good. a pretty good for a Mustang. I don't never had any other of them, but she was good. Yeah. And then and he dang he liked her so well, he dang near didn't sell her. I just almost I almost just kept her, and I was gonna think about just giving her to Russell. <laughs> for, good, for good entertainment. Purposes. Yeah. I would, I would have paid. I'd have taken that one. Would. She was already been to the Brandons. I mean, she was <laughs> ready to go. Yeah. So a lady bought her and just loves her. Oh yeah. She's she's she was wonderful. She she really lucked out that horse. I mean, she got she didn't get much of a day off for twelve months, and then I don't think she's done much of anything for the last four. <laughs> 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 she's just in a pasture eating grass and getting fat, and having shiny. a good time. Yeah, she's like, yeah, this is not so bad. So then uh, that helps uh, get the cash flow a little bit, float the business. Yeah, and you know, it, at that time, like. You know, me buying that horse out of that deal, like that was that was all I kind of had spare cash on me. You know, I'm trying to work. We'd moved, we'd actually moved to Hanford at that point, so we kind of strapped a little bit, go up to Reno, and had a good show. And you know, we won a little money, and we put that towards. I put that towards it, and just kind of went out on a limb and took a bit of took a gamble. A you know. With that, you know, that deal paid twenty five thousand to win it, and there's only twelve in it, you know. So like, you know, pretty good odds. Pretty good million. odds, you know. So yeah, pretty good for exposure too for Lucas Oil. Yeah. We all love them guys. They're yeah. the ones fighting for us out there. Yeah. yeah, just trying to prove that there's a way to manage that Mustang herd. Yeah, and that they're good horses, and it don't hurt to uh, spay the fillies and stop their growth, right. and that you can take them. And go do something with them. Right. I yeah, mean, absolutely. just really, and at the same time, helping a young guy get a big start. Yeah, you're doing right. Life. Yeah, there's been a bunch yeah. of guys get helped out with those Mustang deals down here, the Mustang makeovers and stuff they mm -hmm. have here in Fort Worth. Yep. I know, I mean, let Taron Munch, I think, bought his place with his, and I think paid 50000 or something, and it kind of gives us down payment for his place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are back in the room, Chris, with Andrew Steger. 2018 limited open bridal national champion yes sir that's a mouthful of words right there baby you did well yeah and <laughs> and the 2019 uh, 19. world finals prelims winner from limited open bridal yep. this year and reserve champion reserve champion and the limited open bridal and then third in the limited open hackamore nice yeah well, that's a nice little trip to texas eh? Yeah, no, it makes the makes the drive back to California a little better. Right, not as long. <laughs> better than driving home with a Mustang <laughs> in the trailer. Oh, that's yeah. driving home with my tail between my legs. I'll tell you <laughs> that. I've done that. I've done that trip before. Been, been, <laughs> there. been there. Amen to that. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Luckily, we live close, Russell. Right. We live close. Short trip. Yeah, short, short trip. trip. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'll fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you let Colt drive. Yeah, yeah. That, I won't fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> 17 year old with a 32 foot trailer is not sleeping time <laughs> the dallas traffic i've seen cold drive and he, he's, i think i'd rather have him drive <laughs> <laughs> oh no respect russell i know you not, ever feel like rodney dangerfield <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not till right now <laughs> hey good job last night though russell with all the interviews and a little commentation and all that. That was cool. Hey, cool. We just finished up the world's greatest finals mm -hmm. last night. And so we're here on a Sunday morning after the world's greatest sitting here with Andrew. And we're going to finish up part two of his uh, conversation. Yeah, we got cut a little short. Uh, that was on probably Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, several days ago. I, and I was, was in and out. I had to go help out a youth kid going. We had things going all directions. It was crazy. Yeah. Thursday, so, wasn't it? Yeah, you had you showed your yeah, horses It was pre prelims, yeah. Oh, you were, it was a prelims. That was a prelims for the world's greatest, wasn't it? Yeah, somewhere I in thought there. so. Yeah, yeah, you guys had to go, you had to, we had, you guys had to go rope. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. 
You all right over there? Yeah, hey, man. I've been working. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> so we're going to go right back to uh, we just got done with Andrew winning the Mustang Challenge, yep. talking at a pretty easy, a uh, big chunk of change. I don't think there's anything easy about it. It's kind of like marrying for money. Yeah. He earned every penny right <laughs> yeah. there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, and, but I think he picked the best also. Good job picking there. Picking. That little mare was pretty oh, I'm the good minded. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? I was gonna say I haven't met Kelsey, but he. J- <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's a pretty I've, good. I've got an too. eye, I guess. <laughs> it's got a good eye. It's got a good eye. <laughs> so we're gonna get back to training in uh, America. We kind of skipped over. You got little oop. Uh, made a deal with. Turns out with my mother in law on a horse and um, made her a deal on training and got to show her, but got tons of exposure, showed her a ton right there in uh, California at the Valley Cow Horse, got your feet wet with the show. And talk about a little bit how that helped you get closer to being able to come here and compete at the um, national level. So uh, that little man, that she was a good man. She'd had, she gave me the opportunity to get in the pen, go and go and get in the pen and get a feel for it, you know, like, there's so much going on in this sport. Not easy just to go and go and ride and go go show and you know. So it was it was great. We had I was really lucky at the time too because we had a, we had the facility there in Porterville that enabled us to uh, put on some cow horse shows as well. So we I used that to my advantage a little bit to where I could I could we had uh, I think two or three shows there a year and home ground advantage never worked. No, I just no, never ever. does. Yeah, because they'd come in and they'd put banners up and then that mare would spook at everything. <laughs> 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 so, uh, no, but it was good. It was, it, it, she allowed me to uh, get my feet wet, get in the, get in the pan and, and get a feel for, the, for everything, you know. And we came out here. Uh, the first year I started showing her, we'd, we had qualified for, the, for this world show. And I think we came out here and I think I came out and, stayed with you yep and we came out and we we had probably the best run we had my best best run i ever had at that point i didn't make the finals but you know <laughs> uh, but you know i i came out and i learned a lot you know by coming to a stage of this of this caliber and being at a premiere event it was my first premiere event so to call it and um got to watch the world's greatest got to watch sat there and I, I watched all the herd works, I watched all everything, you know, I really kind of took note of what everybody was doing and how people would show and and uh, so it was a real big, it was a big learning curve for me for that. So even though, say, you know, that, that mare was no superstar, she, you still got a lot out of that mare as far as oh, experience. Absolutely, it, yeah. You know, it, it's, some, it's not always, a, we've talked a lot about the horse that brings you, Chris, you know, but sometimes it's the horse that just lets you show. Yeah, just gives you an opportunity to be at the event. Yeah, yeah. Because absolutely. Because, like I say, just getting immersed in that stuff and, like I say, being on there and sit there and watch herds and watch that many good guys back to back and just keep, like, all right, well, the, you wow. can't help but learn something. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I, you go to your weekend shows, and nah, you, you, you get a couple good runs. I mean, a lot of school and this and that. And, but, like, to and come here to where it's every single person is going out there to work as good as possible on good horses, and, like, you just can't help but learn from that. No, yeah. I, so I know that at home you get to go ride with Jake some, and I've come out there some, but. Yeah. Coming here and seeing so many horses and so many people do it uh, for just for. 10 days it really is a eye-opener sure like whoa there's the level <laughs> and you yeah like you there's a lot of stuff that you know like i picked up on a lot of stuff just by watching everybody through them 10 days every and little things you know from from working out the herd or going down the fence but to just presentation of showing you know just their actual having a presence in an arena and stuff you know like little things like that all kind of build up how they sit Yes, you know, what they, you know, reading cows, different cows, you got going down the fence, there's so many variables there, you know, and you can sit there and you watch that fence work all day long during the prelims of the derby and the open bridles and open hackamores and all that, and you see you see all these open trainers, they can make something happen out of a bad cow or they can make a good cow 
even better, you know, and you pick up on stuff like that. Yeah, and probably getting to see some really good trainers, really good horses bite the dust too. Yeah. Let you think, hey, you know, you we're, know, we're not, only human. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> they're not unbeatable. Yeah. There was a guy here in the Derby, and he was oh, he come out and he was kind of kicking the old dirt and like I don't know why I'm not getting marked and this and that. And so uh, uh, he got his first dose of "Be careful what you ask, Chris." He says, uh, "What do you think there?" And I'm like, "Well, I says you're doing a heck of a job of getting them trained." I says, "But it's your job to sell it to them judges and." You're not selling it. You're not. You don't. You're not making me believe you. I'm like, I see that that horse is broke. I know that you're doing a good job, but you know. And so, just like you're talking about, as far as that presentation in the show ring, doesn't. I mean, there's horse trainers and there's showmen, and you yeah. got to be a balance of the two. You yeah. know, and, and that's that was all a, a constant struggle. That was a that was a huge eye eye opener for me when I first came. You know, like because I'd uh, I'd I'd showed that that mad little loop a few times, and you know, and I'd always have have somebody video video me all the time and and then i'd send it actually I, i'd send it to joe joe willoughby my right good mate you know and he he'd always say well, you gotta you gotta quit training when you go to, you gotta keep just keep showing you gotta go show no for sure yeah and that was a that was great advice you know and having haven't been able to have somebody like that to you know tell you it, it was right. it was good too yeah that video feedback you can't replace it you oh, can't you can't it. argue with it? No. no. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you can't argue yeah, with it. You can't yeah. argue with it. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. yeah. I had a little girl. She went, uh, well, she's a little girl. She's 15, 16, just turned 16. She won the youth bridal here. First time to win the youth bridal, so that was cool. But they used to live in Indiana, and when she'd come out, her mama would video every lesson. And, like, you would not tell this girl the same thing twice. It was unbelievable. Wow. And, like I say, now they move back here, and they're closer, and so – they don't quite get as in depth with the video and stuff like that, but man, the future looks bright. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My yeah watching that youth bridal was like, holy smokes! Oh my lord, the youth, the, all the youth stuff. I mean, it's exploding right now, oh. and they are coming with a vengeance. Yeah, we got a conversation with Trail last night that. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you got the Cutter McLaughlin and Emily Kent and oh. shoot, and then countless others. Hey, too bad for Andrew. He's young. He's going to have to compete with them. We're old. We won't have to right, compete. Yeah, we'll my 401k <laughs> is about to kick in. You know, I got my Social Security coming on this. Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was some of the – after you get done with you, you get some horses from the True Bloods and some kind of step it up a little bit. Yeah, so I'd had I'd had a little loop. Then uh, I got sent – True Bloods sent me cash. Actually, I got to show him – I got to show him in my first three event at the Derby one year in the level one on his last year at the Derby. And he was awesome. He was great. But he, you know, I, my show experience didn't, didn't, uh, we didn't have a great show, but the horse was really good. You know, we had some bad luck, but he, uh, that, that showed me, but that horse has showed me how to, uh, like, so little loop kind of got me in the pen and got me a feel of it. And that horse has been able to teach me how to, how to show and, like go and present something and and actually try and win. Yeah, and and, pr and probably has and that horse has a little more power, so yeah. you can actually do more riding. Yeah, Loop was a really just a nice little horse, and you can do a ton of training because you run her out of air. This horse, you you go get to do some. Yeah, we can. I got a lot of horse. Yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's he's a good horse. Uh, so he was definitely he's definitely a big step up step up horse, and I'm pretty lucky to have a kind of a caliber horse this early but you know so but he, he he's really trying to kind of showed me how to uh get in the pan and then go and and go and try and win present it you know yeah so and the little you got the, him and the little trash today's just married now you got a three-year-old coming up but what about just life that you how many other horses do you have how you know how you're making the bills and and if we know kelsey's also barrel racing and doing some training there trying to get down the road and do well. So what, just about making the bills. So we we, uh, we ride a lot of horses, you know, between the two of us. And for a long time, I rode everything and anything. Just if you wanted to send a horse, I'd, if it had hair on it, I'd ride it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. you know. You know, and I actually, I do actually start a lot. I, I break in a lot of horses. That's kind of probably 90%, 95% of my business right now is is breaking in or starting cult so to speak so a lot of that we get kelsey's kelsey's kind of 
killing it in the barrel racing. So I get a lot of barrel horses. Yeah. Just to just to break in to start and then and then a lot of them horses will stay and they they go to her too afterwards and and then she gets to put them on the put them on the pattern and then go down to to the fraternities if they want to go that way or or whatnot. But no, there's always there's always a lot of different horses coming through the house. You yeah. know every because we we're on the you know sixty ninety days and, and they go home and something else comes in so. We get we get a lot of different horses coming through, and you get to feel a lot of different different styles and different. You know, they're all individuals. You get to f- you get you get to see a lot of different animals. Yeah, you get to see some uh, hotter horses with those that barrel horse blood coming through there. Have to learn how to deal with that. Yeah, them, you know, and every, a lot of them horses aren't too bad. I kind of get along with something that wants to move its feet a little better. I think you don't have to ride them as hard, you know. Yeah, they'll do a lot of it themselves. Yeah, and if you want to go, that's fine. Let's go. <laughs> kind of, a, but kind of a little bit, you know, Chris. When we've talked to a lot of other people, especially older guys, how much crossover there was in the old days with the different disciplines. Sure. Well, yeah, when you're young and starting, there's still there's crossover. There's a lot of crossover. Yep. There's rope horses. There's ranch horses. There's barrel horses. There's there's Arab zappies. I mean everything. I've been over there. It's only I, just been a few years that I haven't like had at least one huntsy horse in the barn. Yep. I mean, mom kind of send me like some colts, you know, that get them things riding around a little bit. And I mean, we'd have some big old giant slow lopers in there. People be like, "What yeah. the heck is that?" Like, they pay the bills. Yeah. <laughs> God pay I, the bills. I rode plenty of Morgans and uh, uh, Arabians. Right. Yeah. I, I ain't yeah. scared of a good horse. I don't know about you. I ain't scared of no. a good one. I'll take one. I, I, I don't, don't care, care what, what he, it is. I don't care what his breed of color is. He, no matter me. Yeah. Non discriminator. This is an equal opportunity podcast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrew, how so? How did you get so um, hooked on the cow horse? Stepping from the saddle bronc riding, which is so intense. How is it, what about the cow horse drew you in? What? Why do you like it so much? You know, like to me, the uh, I'd because I'd rodeoed and we went, we were you know eighty hundred rodeos a year. And then you go to maybe twenty, if if you if you're really showing, you do twenty, ten, right? You know, there's what you know. You don't do a lot of lot you of shows. Five, five majors, yep. Five majors, and you go to your club shows and stuff. So you know, you might hit fifteen shows a year. I don't, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but so it was a tough. It was a very very hard changeover competition wise because you uh, you didn't have you didn't have another radio to go to. You didn't have another show to go to. And we, so. But for me, it was more about it brought me back to my you know back to my roots a little bit more from home, and it was more about me getting better and being a better horseman and learning more about the animal. The sport itself, I mean it it hooked me you know going down the fences it's it's as it's as good as fi- if you can go make a good fence run, I think you guys can probably made a lot more than I have so. But you can agree that's that's as good as feeling as anything, you know. I've never I've never tailed a bull out of a Toyota. <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah, I mean it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but the so the adrenaline part of it, it is a little you know like when you're young and you just thrive on that adri- adrenaline, catching bulls and riding horses at buck and all that stuff. It's kind of it's amazing how the fence work can fill that. Yeah, and I, but it, but for me it was it's just it, it brought me a, a, to a new level of horsemanship to where I didn't I didn't know horses could go do this stuff. You know, we'd just run them around at home, and, and they were you know all them horses we grew up on were all so natural. Uh, they're just naturally good good cow horses, uh, good work horses, and stock horses and. But so this is a different deal because you, it's you know you're you're kind of com- you're in an arena a lot of the time and you spinning and sliding and all that sort of stuff is, was all new to me. I was like, oh, well, you can actually get them to do that. I thought that was just lucky sometimes, you know. Yeah, I think good, I could I could I got a good skid. You know? I could, there's one. <laughs> yeah. Get a picture. Yeah, step it off. Yeah. Oh get off man, twelve foot. Twelve? <laughs> oh, oh, post thinking, this on Facebook. I was thinking like six. Yeah. <laughs> six foot was great. Six foot on the right <laughs> foot. Yeah. <laughs> Five and a half on the left. Yeah. I got a lot of ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
still working on the 11s. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like Morse code. So maybe the um, the mix between, and I kind of felt the same way. It was awesome to know that they can do that consistently. Yeah. And then maybe the fence work, while you're doing the learning, the fence work puts a speed in there that keeps the adrenaline, that keeps it interesting. But when you're, you know, fighting bulls and fighting horses and stuff, it's more of a, I mean, it's just a contact sport that you don't have a lot of, you don't have a lot of control over everything when in that life. But in this one, you get to go fast and you can make it turn out better yeah. just by getting, by getting, you know, all the work you do at home. And, and it's, I think it's very re- rewarding. Yes. You know, for me, it was, you know, you, you, we get up every morning and you go ride your horses every day, right? And you get to go to these shows and you get, and then you come to a show like a big show like this and your horses do well, win, lose, or draw, but your horses go and make the best run they ever made or do something better than they've done before. And that, that to me is what I love about it is it, it makes you, it makes you better yourself and better your horses. And, and it just, it's just very rewarding when they when they come to town and they look good yeah that's a huge deal there and that's a that's a huge step for for a guy that hasn't shown a a ton you know to be able to grasp that and to glean that reward from how your horse was and not necessarily from how them judges said your horse was you know and so that's that's a big deal uh, being early in your career and having having your head wrapped around that so like i say i don't i don't like to give those guys my control so no, I, say, exactly. I, I know whether yeah. it was good or bad when I come out. I don't yeah. need them to tell me. Yeah. And then, like, if it works and they pay it, then cool. But yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like saying that, like, you, you you feel it. You know, you can feel whether or not he's he's better or he's, or he's sure. not, you know. So, you know, regardless, if you're a 75 or a 65, if he's better than what he was yesterday, then I'm happy. Yeah, you know? darn right. Yeah, yeah so. that's super cool. And yeah. people notice it, too. They'll tell you. you know, there's a lot of times when – you don't win, and people say, "Hey, man, your horse looks good." Yeah. Well, bad luck here, yeah. or there, or whatever. But your horse looks good, and it, it does make you feel good. You like, looking at me again? No. You, you keep picking on me. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said your wife's horse looked good. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone will argue with that. <laughs> no, he gets there. everything. Yes. He gets everything. The perfect wife who has a perfect horse. Gosh. Perfect co- have the perfect, perfect co-host. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the going forward, what are you thinking about, Andrew? What's your thoughts? You There's know, a lot of people in your shoes. Uh, going forward, I'm just every day, every day, one day at a time, you know, one step, step at a time and try not to get so far ahead that I can't catch up. I don't know. I just uh, try and keep it pretty simple. Want to want to keep going down this road and get to where I have, uh, you know, trying to trying to get to where I have more show horses and in the barn every year. And and so far, it's you know, it's been a it's been a slow ride. But you know, I had one I had one last year. I got two this year. And slow ride, Chris. Four years. For right, exactly. <laughs> Four years, yeah. <laughs> Overnight success. <laughs> like, I keep telling you, it's minimum 10 years to be an overnight success. So. Oh, I know. And you're knocking <laughs> at it in four years. I don't know about that. <laughs> but Reserve world champion. It, and it, national champion last year. Yeah. Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Doing yeah, pretty a lot good. of guys. A lot of guys be a, would trade spots with you, I guarantee you. Yeah. So um, in all the different kind of horses that you have, how have you changed your style from, say, the old days in Australia to the horses you're starting now? Have you adapted much? What basics do you stay with on that? I, I think I've probably changed a lot of things. Not so much, uh, not so much, you know, myself, but I've I've been able to adapt from riding in, you know, you ride in an arena a lot of the times every day. You know, we ride out a little bit, whereas the, at home we'd ride out a lot. And then you'd ride in the arena a little bit, so that was a big adapt, big big thing to adapt to, you know. And being able to get, you know, you, we just I, d- I don't have the miles that we used to have on them horses at home. You, we'd get out and every morning, and we'd go catch one at before daylight, and you'd get off it at dark, you know. And then he'd get two days off, and you'd have three or four horses in your string, and they'd get rode once or two or three days a week. But the days them horses got rode. And 
and it's the same for you guys over here, like cowboy and stuff. Like, yeah. I'm sure that's the same way. So that was hard to kind of get get used to to stay in confined. Con- but yeah. I have to make myself get real creative in the arena. Like, and I not yeah. that I have any extensive ranching background, but trying to keep everything job oriented with them horses. I give them up, a reason. You gotta have. Yeah. They gotta have a reason. I end up having like invent stuff like luckily i was the only child so i have pretty good imagination <laughs> and so like i pretend pretty good and i mean we i chase things around and they're like, what are you doing i mean i just you didn't see that i was chasing it right. like chasing I'll, who i'm like my friend i got some butterflies around there that right yeah no it's around a little bit yeah but yeah like but i think it just for me i just try and work on uh keep my horses try try and keep them soft it's, right that's and, and that's it's hard to do I still haven't figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> but like we were talking. Come here and get on with <coughs> you guys. And it's like, ooh, yeah, they're my nice and soft. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about earlier, Chris, guys starting colts and how the people that start colts and never show versus the people that start colts and show and then what it changes about your goals in those first 30, 60, 90 days, you know, after yep. you've shown uh, it just still comes back to your horse, though, huh? Like if you got a, you know, you got a metallic cat there, and you might not get the same out of that horse as you will, a, I don't know, a dash to fame. So it just depends. I think I don't ever, I don't ever worry too much about that side of it. I just, I just ride a lot uh-huh. <laughs> and go and you know, run around, chase things, rope. I try to rope as much as I can on them, on them babies. Gives gives them a job. Let it work a lot of cows. Sour. I got I got some uh I got some Corianic steers there that I I I work a lot of them two year olds on and they're just sour as hell. But they'll they'll sit there and they don't get to running down running over you or they'll go and just circle around and give them give them ba- babies something to track around and chase and get them get them get them off me a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's really cool there. So kind of where to, where can people find you? They want Send you a horse for you to <laughs> chase stuff around. You got a website, Facebook, uh, yeah. Insta tweet. Yeah, uh, what is it? I don't know what Insta tweet is. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm I'm very bad at social media. Oh right, I will say that. <laughs> I, I have a uh, pager. A page. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Send this in with nine one one behind it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> triple zero. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in Hamford. Yeah, Steger quarter horses, Steger performance horses. Andrew Steger's horsemanship. Andrew Steger. Yep, Andrew Steger horsemanship on Facebook. Yep, excellent. They can get you there. Awesome. Well, All right. Andrew. Enjoyed it very much, Andrew. That's awesome. Yeah, yep. thanks for having me. You yep. bet. Thank you for listening to Cow Horse Full Contact. Please like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram to stay tuned for future episodes.